Well, what's funny is I've actually been able to repair two of these drives using the same procedure that Okay, well welcome to the second video in our little series on repairing old hard disks. And so I'm going to attempt to try and repair this Quantum Pro Drive ELS that I believe has a very common problem with the, um, the bump stop for the head mechanism um, basically um, turning into, um, into goo and causing the head mechanism to stick in position and also to cause the head mechanism to park in the wrong place on the disk. So, as I mentioned, this is a fix for, well, th this is a, 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 one of the causes of a drive that will spin up, but the heads won't move, and you'll then hear the drive spin down. So, I'm going to power it on here, and we'll see what it does. I, so, this is before I've done anything to the drive, so let's see what happens. So I don't know if you heard that, but the drive spun up, but the heads didn't move and it just spun down again all by itself. And that's all that you'll get out of this drive. So obviously this drive, I believe, has that issue. So we're going to take the drive apart and we'll see what's what. Okay, so here is the, uh, the Quantum Pro Drive ELS. And uh, first thing we'll do is we'll take the, the top cover off. Now, thankfully, with the ELS, that's quite easy to do because there are simply six screws on the top that will allow you to remove the top cover. Because other, unlike other quantum drives like this one here, this, this older Pro Drive, you can see that you actually have to remove the screws on the top, but you also have to take off, remove these two labels, actually, actually remove this label because there is actually a nut underneath that actually links, I think, the, the head, which goes through the the, the fulcrum for the, the head assembly. But with this drive, all you do is you take out these six screws. Okay, we've taken the screws out. Now, before I proceed, I should mention once again that you should only attempt this if you have a drive that doesn't work and you just want to see if you can get it working again. I have no idea if, if this fix is successful, I have no idea how long it's going to continue working for. But again, for an old Apple Macintosh that you're, you're messing around with, I don't really consider it a big, um, a big risk. After all, the drive at this point doesn't work at all, so you have nothing to lose. And it's also worth noting that if you have data on this, on this drive that you want to get back, that you don't have anywhere else, it might be worth it just to get the data off. Anyhow, we've taken the screws out, so we should be able to just carefully prise the top cover off. There we go. Now you can see that this drive looks very similar to the other drive we were looking at, except that Quantum have a different method for parking and locking the head mechanism. And as you can see here, you see this plastic lever right here. Now what this does is, this is actually, this lever is actually blown outwards by the air pressure generated when the drive is spinning. That's, I think, why, the reason why we have these little fins on the inside of the, the hub. And at this, in this position, the lever is spring-loaded. As you can see, it's spring-loaded. Oh, it's moved inwards. It's spring-loaded in, in the current position. And if you look, the lever actually locks the head assembly in place because as the lever moves in, it prevents the heads from moving outwards because it locks the part of the mechanism just under here from moving. Once the drive spins up, this lever is moved out of the way and as you can see in that position it moves away from the head mechanism thereby allowing it to move. But this part is actually not the issue with this quantum drive. In fact I can see already that this drive definitely has the problem that I was mentioning. And the reason I know that is because, let me just zoom out a bit, the reason is that if you look at the distance with the drive in the park position, if you look at the distance between the heads and the hub of the spindle assembly, 
Look how close the heads are. They're almost touching the center of the, the um, well, the, the, they're, almost, they're almost touching the hub. They're far too close in. And the reason is because the bumper that sits underneath here has collapsed and is allowing the heads to move too far inward. So that definitely is the cause of this drive's failure. The question is, can we fix it? Now, I should mention, I've only attempted this on the 80 megabyte ProDrive ELS drives because they have a single platter, which makes it a lot easier to work with. You can see there's only one platter here, and therefore there's only two heads, one on each side. So it's relatively easy to work with, but again, I have no idea if this is actually going to work. I've done it before a couple of times with success, but who knows? The one time I film it, I'll probably screw it up. Let's see. So at this point, we need to get... Well, think, first thing we'll do is we'll take out the park lock assembly here. Now, to do that, we have a little... Um, looks like a circlip of sorts. We have to lever off, and we can pull this white lever straight up and out of the drive. Now, to do that, I've got a set of precision screwdrivers which you will also need to work on these drives because we have to deal with some very, very small Torx bits here, which we need to get the drive platters out later on. So, um, actually, to make it easy, we, we, we may actually take the top cover off the head assembly first. There's a magnet underneath here, and there are three... Well, there's two screws and a nut we have to take out. So we've got two Phillips screws here, and we have a nut we have to undo here to take this top assembly out. Obviously, do, try to avoid touching the platters as you do this. That's a long, long screw comes out. This one's a short one. There we are. And then we have to take this nut out. Now I've got a nut driver for that. I think it's the right size. I think it's. I think that's the one I need. Yep, that's the one. You could do it with a pair of pliers, but I don't recommend it if. Uh, it's easier using a nut driver. There we are. Actually, it's magnetised, so the nut came off with the bit. There we go. So at this point, we can very carefully pry, because we're working against the magnetic attraction, we can pry this top plate off the head assembly. And uh, what I'll, I think I'll use, and I'll use the... Just use a flat bit for that. Just have to be very careful. I just have to pry down here, pry up. Now notice there's quite a... As I was saying, there's quite a bit of force acting on this to keep the whole mechanism together because you have, a, you have a permanent magnet on the top and on the bottom and they're obviously attracted to each other. So you have to be quite forceful to get this off. There we go. So you can see that's the plate I just pulled off and you can see the two permanent magnets there, and there's two more underneath. So this is the voice coil for the head mechanism. This is the coil that, oops, oh, that sticks to me. <laughs> I have to use a pointer that's not magnetic. Um, so this is the, um, the voice coil, which allows the controller of the drive to move the head back and forth. So what we'll do now is we will now take off the, the parking um, actually, we may not need to, come to think of it, because it's now... Now we've removed the top cover, it's actually... Whoops! <laughs> because we've moved the top cover off, it's actually allowed the park lock to swing out of the way, so we can probably get the platter out with the... As you can see there, it's moved... Whoops, wrong way. It's moved it out of the way here, so we can probably get the platter out with this lever in place, so we might leave it, in fact. Um, now, I actually know we can't because in, we've got to, in order to get, in order to move the heads off the plate, we have to swing it out, the, the head assembly, swing it out this way, which means this will be in our way, so we will have to take it out. So what I'll do is I'll get the, I'll get my very small flathead screwdriver. Uh, let's see, let's use 
that one and we will carefully prise up on this little clip. I think it's just a press fit onto the top of the shaft so let's see if we can remove it. Oops. I'll keep my finger on there just to keep it in. Oop, to keep it from oop. Okay, now it just came off and it's landed. Do you can see it just there? Let me quickly try and oops, now my screwdriver is stuck. <laughs> I might just leave that there for the time being, it's not, not going anywhere. So but what we can now do is we can now pull this lever up and out, but there's actually a spring underneath it, so you have to be careful of that. Oops. <laughs> Helps to use a non-magnetic screwdriver for this, which of course I don't have. There we are. Actually, there's and there's the lever and there's the spring. You can see the spring just there. We'll put that aside. Okay. Now at this point, we have to swing the head mechanism over and actually past its normal limit of travel to get the heads off the platter. Now I've been, I've been told that you should never let the heads touch each other because that will destroy them. I'm not really sure if that's correct, but I'm going to play it safe and I'm going to actually use a little piece of plastic, it's a very professional job this, a piece of plastic to move the heads onto to keep them apart. This is where it gets tricky. I have to very carefully move the heads across and then just as they're coming off the disc, off the platter, I have to move them onto this. So I think what I'll do is I'll first of all move the heads all the way to the end. I'll stop about there where they're just, just about to head off the disc. I'm going to stop there. I'm going to insert my piece of plastic in between the heads. Let's see if I can get a closer shot of this. You watch me screw up. Uh, <laughs> this, uh, come on, focus. Come on. That's, looks like that's as close as I can get. So I'm going to try and stick this in. <laughs> I have no idea if this is going to work. In between the heads and move, there we go, and move them off the disc. There we go. Right, okay, I've now done that. Oops, you could, <laughs> my finger was in the way. What I've done though is I've moved the platter, moved the heads off the platter, but I've kept the heads apart with that little piece of plastic. Again, I may have actually put too much force on that lever that it won't actually contact the disc anymore, but we shall see. Again, we've got nothing to lose at this point. Now, now that the head mechanism is free, we can actually take the platter out of the disc. So to do that, we have to take out three torque screws. So if we find my small Torx, Torx driver, I'm not sure which, what size I need, but let me see if I can find it. I'm sure the right size will be in here somewhere. Um, it's actually, it's, is it a Torx or a Hex? No, it's a Torx. So let me try a T, let me try a T8. Let's see if I guessed correctly. Nope, too big. Way too big. Okay, let's try a T, let's try a T6. Too small, that'd be right. All right, T7 it is. Let's check that. Actually, no, it's no, it's it's actually slightly. It's 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 basically between a T6 and a T7, but a T6 will actually fit. So we'll have to try that. So I'm going to try and take these out. Obviously, just holding the the hub while I crack these loose. There we go. They're actually they're actually not that tight, so it's quite easy to. Uh, to uh, take them out. Now once I do this, I should be able to lift the hub off the spindle. 
like that. And now I can actually take the platter out of the disc. Now, of course, that's the, the question. How do you take it out without touching it? And uh, I'm going to have to use uh, some more pieces of plastic, which I think I have somewhere here. Here we are. Just grab. I might just get a piece of plastic, insert it, one in that corner, one in this corner, and try and just lift the, the platter up, because I want to try and avoid touching it. Again, I know this is not the right way to do this, but... Uh, at this point, we shall, uh, we shall see what happens. So if I put a piece in there, you can see how the platter is now free. If I lift up... <laughs> if I lift up... Oh, my hand's in the way again. I do apologise, but it's a little bit hard to uh, do this in film. OK, the platter is now loose. We'll just move that over here and set it down carefully. I'm actually going to set it on the inside of the drive's cover because it's probably the cleanest surface that, uh, that I can use. Now, there we have it. What you're looking at here is the rubber bumper that I was talking about. And look at what's happened to it. That bumper used to be um, a complete ring, but look at what's happened to this side, the side of the head assembly contacts, it's all been squashed in. And it's also, I would say, very, very sticky. If I, oh, it's very, in fact, it's, it, it, has, it has in fact turned to complete mush. Let me just show you what I mean. I would not be able to pull this out currently because it won't come out as a solid piece. It's all mush. And just to show you what I mean, if I get another piece of, uh, piece of plastic, watch what happens. I'm actually able to scoop it up. It has the consistency of, um, well, if you're Australian, it has the consistency of Vegemite. <laughs> Looks like it too, but it doesn't taste like it though. And so you can see that the rubber is just, has just turned to mush. And something to note, be very careful not to get this mush on your fingers because you will have a hell of a time trying to get it off because it's basically plastic, just in a, uh, an unstable form. And so it, it, will, it, it takes a lot of scrubbing to get it off your hands. So what I'm going to do now is I'm going to try and clean up the remnants of that mush, and I'll just use a cotton wool sort of Q-tip just to try and get most of it off, and I've, I'll then clean it off the remainder off with some uh, some some alcohol. You can see you can see that it's oh, it's totally had it. Look at that, totally had it. Let's try and clean off as oop, as much as I can there. It's okay. Uh, just throw that away. So I might actually have some remnants of the cotton wool bud. I'll just spray a bit of a bit of alcohol onto the end of the uh, cotton wool bud to try and remove any any excess. Not that it really matters, but when we put the new bumper on, we want to make sure that uh, this area is as clean as possible so that it seats properly. So imagine if, if Quantum had only decided to use a metal pin like this, which, which of the correct diameter, this problem wouldn't happen. Um, but they put the rubber there, as I said, to reduce the, that annoying clunk sound when the drive powers off, and also to, um, well, to, they put the rubber there to act as the, the end stop. But if the end stop were metal, this problem would not happen. But anyway, obviously uh, they had no idea that the rubber was going to degrade to such an extent, but bear in mind this drive is, uh, well, <laughs> probably at least almost 25 years old, so. <laughs> okay, so at this point we've cleaned off most of the remnants of the old goo, so we now have to find something to put over this to act as the new um, bump stop, because if I reassemble the drive like this and try and use it, when the heads park, they will end up hitting this and they will be, again, 
too far inwards and too close to the spindle for the drive to function. So we have to put some kind of spacer around here. So I need to find something. So hopefully if I get a small length of hose that has the right inner inside and outside diameter, I can put it, I can cut a very small length of it and stick it over the top. So I'm gonna go and see what I've got to put on there. Okay, well I found something that I can use to put in place of that rubber bumper. And it's actually a length of um, a vacuum hose for a, for a car. But it turns out that the diameter is about right, although the inner diameter is slightly too big. So if you put it over the top, it won't actually sit in position. Um, it, it, it's, it, it's a little bit loose, but a bit of super glue will, uh, will solve that problem. So I'm going to cut a very small section off this that's long enough to fit over this pin without going too high. Because remember, the platter sits here. So if you cut too long a length, it will actually rub against the platter. So you have to be careful not to go any higher than this metal pin. So I want to cut, let's try, let's try that much. Okay, oops. So here's, here's the length that I've, that I've cut. So if I slip it over the top, you can see it's way too tall. So I need to trim that down a bit. Let me try and cut that again. We need a very sharp knife to do this because it's hard to cut. It's hard to cut this. Let me try another, uh, cut another length off. I've got a very, very short length. That's better. Let's try that. So I pop this down here. And it's slightly too tall to trim a bit more off that. If I can, <laughs> this, is, this is going to be tricky. Just trying to trim a little bit more off the uh, off the end so that it sits flush with the top of the pin. Let's try that. Still too tall. Hmm. Got to trim some more off that. Okay, I have a sharp knife, so I'll just cut a very, very thin section off the end of the hose. Because that way. I know that it will actually will actually fit. Oh, nearly. Come on, cut through. There we go. So I've now cut a very, very small ring. So put that on there. Ah, very good. So you see that that actually sits exactly where it needs to be. You can see that it doesn't extend above the top of the the pin. And actually it actually sits in there quite well. It probably doesn't need any um, any glue. I think I will put a tiny bit on just to be just to be safe and make sure it doesn't um, doesn't go anywhere. So I'll just put a tiny bit of glue on the inside of the There we go. Stick that on. There we are. So that is now in place. Let's push it down, make sure it's all the way down. Yep, good. So there we have it. We've replaced the bump stop for the head mechanism. So I think at this point, we can um, we can reassemble the drive, and let's hope uh, let's hope I don't uh, make too big a mess of it. <laughs> okay, well, 
first thing we've got to do is put the platter back in. So what we'll do there is we'll very carefully, actually I think I'll lift it up from the corner with my fingers because I can grab the corner and just sit it on top and just let it drop into position. There we are. So that's now in. So now we will put the hub assembly on top. There we are. Just line the holes up. I think they're right. Uh, let's see. No, they're not lined up. I'm just going to move it slightly. There we go, now they're lined up. Oops. Oh. <laughs> I have to hold that while I uh, tighten that one down. Don't have to over tighten them, just uh, have to keep the uh, keep it clamped on there because obviously this is what clamps the platters to the uh, to the spindle, so they don't uh, they don't slip when the knives rotating. There we go. So it's spinning freely. That's good. Now we have to very carefully get the heads back onto the platter. So I'm going to very very carefully. Now this is. Yeah, this is where it's going to be a little tricky. I may have to spread the heads apart with something because otherwise they'll catch. I may actually move, I think what I'll do, just thinking out loud here, I think I'm going to take my very small flat head screwdriver and actually move the piece of plastic under the platter, which will then guide the lower head onto the underside of the platter while I maintain very slight upward pressure on this one just to keep this one above the platter. There we go, that worked. So get rid of that. So the heads are now on the platter and if I move the heads to the park position notice where they come to a stop. They come to a stop much further away from the spindle than they did previously. Oh, there's that little uh, circle if I'm going to need that. Let me fish that out. Down the bottom. Just get rid of that. There we go. So hopefully this will solve our problem. This is where the heads should normally be parked, not further in. Okay, so what we'll do now is we'll put the park lock lever back in. We have to be careful of the spring and that goes that goes over here, so we have to we have to bend the spring back as we put it in. Just bend the spring and then slide it over the the pin. Ah, see, I don't have any. Okay, I'm just thinking which way the spring is supposed to. You know, I think I have to bend the spring. I thought that was how it was done. Try that. So you'll notice here that there's no spring tension on this anymore. So I think I think I may have. Uh... Nah, I mean, <laughs> what I've also done, I've just realised, is that my rubber bumper is actually slightly too wide because when the heads are all the way in. The, whoops, the park lock lever can't actually engage up here. It can't actually engage. So it's supposed to be able to move over in front of this plastic pin. So maybe I can compress the... No, I can't. Oh, well. It's very, very slight. Oh, well. To be honest, I'm not really that concerned. If we lose the park lock feature of this, I'm not that, not that fussed, but... It's important that you try and get the size of the bumper um, as close to the original as you as you can, but that's okay. I'm not I'm too uh, not too fussed about that. So um, let's uh, let's keep going. So we want to try and get this fixed. Oh, I see what's happened. I've got to move the spring. If you can see it, 
the spring for this which lives just down in there. I've got to move it over that pin. So if I move that over, so the spring has a bit more tension. Let's try that. Ah, that's better. That did the trick. So now we can see that the, the lever is moving like it, like it should. Now I will have to move, move the lever over that. There we go. Oh, I've just dislodged the spring, have I? Yeah, it's very, very close. It's, I've just made the bumper just a hair too wide so that the head, whoops, <laughs> so that the, the head can't move back far enough now to clear this lever. But I'm not really that not really that concerned about it. it just means we won't have the we won't have the park lock system. But that spring, I've lost that bloody spring again. Where did it go? Hang on. <laughs> oh, the joys of fixing a hard disk. Uh, let me get this back in position. Oops. Be amazed if this drive works after I've done all this. <laughs> Uh, yep, so that's where the lever will sit. So it can't actually move. Oh, maybe it, oh, it's very, very close. You can see it's very, very close. But maybe after the drive parks a few times, it'll compress the bumper enough where it will, it will clear, but it won't stop the drive from functioning. So let's put the top cover back on. In fact, I should mention there's another rubber bumper the Quantum used on the drives. You can see the one here, which is the end stop for the head moving focus, the head moving in the other direction, in other words, to make sure it doesn't move too far out. But normally, because the voice coil won't command the head to move too far, it normally never contacts this particular bumper, which is why it's still, uh, still intact. But it is, however, also turning to mush. Not as bad as the other one, but it is uh, starting to go. But that's not really a problem in this case. Now, we have to put the top cover back on the head assembly, and it, as I was about to say, it's got a very strong magnetic attraction. <laughs> so it's, it's important that you try and lower it down carefully. I like to engage this pin with the slot here and then lower the rest of the head assembly on top. Let's see how successful I am. So that's down. Oh, there we go. <laughs> there we go. That worked. That's good. That actually, that actually worked. So that's in. It's all the way down. So we can now put the, uh, put the screws back in. And again, I'll be amazed if this drive actually works. <laughs> actually works. I have done this before and it has worked, so um, I don't know, but it's, of course, the one time I try and film it, it probably won't, but we shall see. So we put that one in. Uh, where's the other one? Where's the other one? Let's put that one in. And the nut. Where did the nut go? There's the nut. Put that on here. the nut driver to, whoops, use the nut driver to tighten it down. Let's have to get this flush on the top, there we go. So at this point the drive is reassembled with the exception of the, um, of the top cover. So I'm feeling really, really rather lucky. So I'm going to actually hook this up to the LC475. I'll leave the cover off and we'll see if the drive actually starts and runs. Fingers crossed. Okay, well we have the newly, well repaired, we hope repaired, Quantum Pro Drive hooked up to the LC475. So I've left the top cover off. So I'm going to turn the power on and we'll see what the drive does. So I have no idea what it's going to do. Let's see, and if it actually manages to boot, 
then we'll, um, we'll hook a monitor up and see what's, uh, what's on the drive. Here we go. that my fix was uh, not successful. I think uh, hmm, maybe I damaged the uh, damaged the heads or um, or didn't get the spacing right on the uh, on the rubber bumper. Let's uh, let's try it again. Hang on. Oh, it did something. Did something. Oh, I don't know. I have a feeling that I may have uh, taken, may have uh, moved the head out a little bit too far now from its normal park position. In other words, that, uh, that piece of uh, tube I put on there was uh, slightly uh, too wide. Let's give it a couple more tries. Hmm. Hmm. It's doing something. <laughs> Not what I wanted it to do, though. Mind you, I think the I think the bumper is actually positioned correctly now because the heads are moving when the drive spins up. But I think maybe my uh, maybe they got damaged as I was trying to get them off the disc, which is always a uh, is always a risk, of course, when you're doing it uh, without the right tools. It's not, uh, it's not happy. <laughs> oh, well, there we go. So, um, looks like I wasted my time on that, but, um, well, it was worth a try. It was definitely worth a try. Just make sure everything else is connected up correctly, which uh, I think it is. Yep. yep. Hmm. Hmm. Yeah, I think uh, I think maybe the um, maybe the heads were uh, maybe I damaged the heads as I pulled them off the off the disc, which wouldn't surprise me. Of course, I've done this twice already, and it's worked both times. Of course, the third time I try when I'm filming, it doesn't work. But that's of course exactly what happens when you do, when you try and do a video. We just pop the cover back on, and we'll see if it uh, if anything changes. Doesn't look like it. Nope. I think uh, I think that repair was uh, unsuccessful. Well, um, what can I say? <laughs> I failed. <laughs> Obviously, it was worth a try to try and fix this uh, this quantum drive, but um, obviously um, I must have uh, done something wrong. But I think what this goes to show is that um, normally, if a hard drive malfunctions and it's not an issue with the power or the cabling or anything like that, there's really no way to fix it. Um, but it, it, it is ironic that I have, in fact, I've genuinely fixed two of these drives using that procedure that I just showed you. And both times, they've worked fine, and they continue to work fine, in fact. But this one just doesn't want to, uh, didn't want to play ball. Of course, that's, that's what happens when you try and film the repair. But, <laughs> but obviously, it might be something you want to have a go at if you've got a quantum ELS like this one that, um, that isn't working. As I said, 
haven't lost anything, the drive never worked to begin with. So <laughs> it's always worth a try. So anyhow, I hope you enjoyed uh, my, uh, my failure there in, in failing to fix <laughs> this quantum drive. Um, but um, anyhow, I hope you enjoyed the video and um, thank you for watching and stay tuned for the next section of the issues you encounter with the old Macintosh computer section which will be talking about issues with system memory or RAM. So stay tuned for that. Because unlike older quantum drives, like um, I had one over here. Where's the other quantum drive I had? Um, um, where did it go? <laughs>